Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nahab Zlam. Let's answer this question. How to saturate correctly a controller? In fact, most people commit an error in saturating the control input. Let's take the case where we have a continuous time controller. Suppose that we have this closed loop where we have here our system and suppose that we have this controller and we put here our saturation block. In fact, this closed loop is not correct. Why? Because if you observe, we have here an integrator. In fact, we don't have to put our saturation block after the controller in which there is an integrator. In fact, we have to only saturate the integrator. But how? We go back to our closed loop system. In fact, we put the integrator apart then the rest we put it here then we saturate the integrator how to do that in MATLAB look at this block in fact we can click this block then we can check this case then we can choose values for upper saturation limit and for lower saturation limit then the integrator is saturated okay I repeat we have to only saturate the integrator so we don't have to put the saturation block after a controller in which there is an integrator. Okay, this is not correct. So we have to saturate just the integrator. The question is why? Don't worry, I explain soon. But before I explain, let's take a case where we have a discrete time controller. As you see, we already discussed the case where we have a continuous time controller. Now we will discuss a case where we have a discrete time controller. Let's take this closed loop. Suppose that we have this controller and we put here this saturation block. As you observe, we have here an integrator. So we don't have to put here the saturation block. If we do it, this closed loop is not correct. In fact, as before, we have to only saturate the integrator as we did in the continuous time case. But how to saturate this integrator z over z minus 1? In fact, this integrator corresponds to this block diagram. The ratio between these two signals is z over z minus 1. Suppose this signal y bar and the signal u bar. So y bar over u bar is equal to z over z minus 1, which is equal to 1 over 1 minus z power negative 1. Why? Quite simply, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by z power negative 1. Then we obtain 1 over 1 minus z power negative 1. Now with a cross product, we can obtain this corresponding recurrence equation. In fact, we can verify this equation with our block diagram. As you see here, we have a delay. So we have here y bar at the previous time. So it's really that y bar is equal to y bar at the previous time plus u bar. Now how to saturate the integrator? I mean how to allow it to do integration only between upper and lower saturation limits. Uh, in fact, the idea is to put the saturation block here. Suppose that we have a stop signal for the input of the integrator. So the output of the integrator will go up like that, then will be saturated. For example, we suppose we have here the value term for the upper saturation bound. In fact, this block which is here will saturate the integrator. It will prevent the integrator from continuing to do integration out of saturation bounds, out of saturation limits, okay? Uh, just a little note which is very important. Be careful not to put the saturation block here. This is not correct. Why? Because like that we allow the integrator to continue to do integration without limits okay that's why we have to consider this block diagram it will prevent the integrator from continuing to do integration out of saturation bounds okay so we have to put the saturation block here i repeat in order to saturate z over z minus one we have to consider this block diagram and we have to put this saturation block here. Okay, this is the block diagram that we have to consider in order to saturate the integrator in discrete time. Okay, I go back to our closed loop. Now we have to put the integrator apart because we have to saturate just the integrator. 
As we already explained, we will consider this block diagram in order to saturate the integrator. So I will consider this block diagram for the integrator. I have here the integrator, so the rest I put it here. Like that I can saturate just the integrator, okay? Now I explain why we have to saturate just the integrator if we have a controller in which there is an integrator. I will consider a continuous time controller for this explanation. Anyway, it is the same explanation for a discrete time controller, okay? Let's take the first case where for the closed loop we put the saturation block after the controller in which there is an integrator. Okay, now for the second case we saturate just the integrator where the rest of the controller we put it here. Okay, now what is the difference between the two cases? Let's take for the first case a unit step signal for the reference for the set point and the same for the case 2. Now what can happen for the signal control input U for the case 1? Suppose we have the value 2 for the upper saturation limit and for example we have 0 for the lower saturation limit. We suppose the control input U reaches the upper bound at the time T1. So from T1 this signal is saturated. Okay. Now what can happen for the output Y? Suppose for a stable system the signal Y takes this form. As the control input U is saturated, so it could not give the right signal which allows the output Y to follow the reference, to follow the set point. So we suppose the steady state is equal to 0.7, for example, it's not equal to 1. Why? Because the control input U is saturated. Now let's know what can happen for the signal. In fact, from 0 to the time t1, we have the same signal which is after the saturation block. Now what can happen after the time t1? If you observe here, we have an integrator which is not saturated. And the input of the integrator, which is the error, don't approach 0 because the output y couldn't follow the reference because of the saturated control input u. So the signal after the time t1 will go up like that without stop because the integrator will continue to do integration. Now for the case 2, let's know what can happen for the signal control input u. In fact, from 0 to the time t1, we will have the same signal. Then from the time t1, this signal will be saturated. So we will have the same signal as in the case 1. And therefore, for the output y, we will have the same signal as in the case 1. Now what can happen for this signal? In fact, the signal can look like that from 0 to the time t1. As you observe here, we have a stable transfer function and the input, which is the error, don't approach 0 because the output y couldn't follow the reference because of the saturated control input u. So from t1, the signal will go onto the steady state like that. Now we suppose we have a new step signal for the reference. For example, from the time t2 and with less important value, for example, 0.5. And the same for the reference in the case 2. Now, what can happen for the signals? Pay attention. It's very, very important what I will explain now. Let's take the case 1. Now, what can happen for the signal which exceeded the saturation limit? For example, we are here at the time t2. From the time t2, the signal will try to go down because we have less important value for the reference. So the signal will reach the upper saturation bound and it will continue to go down in order to control the system. Suppose the signal reaches the upper saturation bound at the time t3. From the time 3, it will continue to go down in order to control the system. Now for the signal which is after the saturation block, from the time t2, it will keep the same upper saturation bound for this period. After this period, it will go down in order to control the system. So it will take this period before going down. Now what can happen for the output y? We suppose here we are at the time t2. As you see, the control input u has taken this period before controlling the system. So the output y will stay in the steady state in this period. So the output will take this period before it starts to be controlled. 
Now for the case 2, what can happen for the signals? We suppose we are here at the time t2 where the reference has changed the value. And for this signal, we suppose we are here at the time t2. In fact, from the time 2, the signal will go down immediately. And the same for the control input u, it will go down immediately in order to control the system. So for the output y in the case 2, and from the time 2, it will start immediately to be controlled. But in the case 1, it has taken this period before it starts to be controlled. Not like in the case 2. Why? Because the signals here went down immediately. The integrator is already prevented from continuing to do integration. In the case 1, the integrator has continued to do integration. So the signal exceeded the saturation bound. That's why it has taken time before it reaches the upper saturation bound. So the control input u has taken here a period before it starts to control the system. So the output for the case 1 has taken a period before to be controlled. Not like the output y in the case 2, which started immediately to be controlled. Because we have here an integrator which is saturated. So the signals here have reacted immediately. Now I show you a simulation in MATLAB for our example. In the case 1 for our controller in which there is an integrator, I put a saturation block. As you see here, we have chosen the saturation limits. And for the two cases, we have chosen this transfer function as a plant. Now for the case 2, we only saturate the integrator as we explained before, where I have chosen the same saturation limits that I have chosen for the case 1. Now let's take a look at the output for the two cases. We have here the signal in yellow, it's from the case 1. As you see here, when I changed the reference, the output has taken a period before it starts to be controlled. Why? Because in this controller, there is an integrator which is not saturated. But the signal in blue, which is from the case 2, has reacted immediately when I changed the reference. Why? Because I just saturated the integrator. Okay? For more information, you can do the simulating in order to see all the signals and verify that I explained before. Okay, just one last note that for other examples, when we only saturate the integrator, we can obtain less oscillations for signals. Okay, I hope the subject is interesting for you with me for other subjects and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you for your watching goodbye